This week I've been driving something a little bit different. Today we're in the Mercedes-Benz Sprinter 3500. This particular van is set up to be kind of a camping expedition vehicle. It has the four-wheel drive low-range package, five seats, but you can configure these in up to 1,700 different ways, from 15-passenger vans to just cargo vans, uh, anywhere from 1,500 to 3,500 uh, ratings, and uh, it starts at a pretty reasonable price. This, as we're set up here, starts around 50,000, and uh, as tested, it's about 70 grand. But you can get into one of these uh, for pretty low in the in the 30s. So I'll put some pricing information in the description. But ultimately, this is Mercedes-Benz doing a work van for the U.S. market, something they've offered in Europe for years. But since Mercedes is kind of viewed as a luxury brand here in the U.S. Um, bringing a van like this to the market has been kind of a strange proposition for them. But they've finally done it, and I will say, after driving it all week, it's very good. In college, I was a geology major, and we drove a bunch of 15-passenger Ford Econoline vans, and uh, comparing those to this, this is a whole different world. So let's take you around this Sprinter 3500, and uh, this thing's pretty awesome. There's some new, new cool tech features in this, the first of which is Mercedes' new infotainment called MBUX and uh, there's some neat integration with their app called ProConnect that is installed on your smartphone and it can send uh, delivery information, it can send route, uh, it's kind of a, a company driver interface so that there's more communication enabled um, and you can kind of have predetermined routes, the company can track where you're going, uh, make things more efficient manage deliveries and services, stuff like that. So pretty cool integration with this infotainment that's new for this year on this Sprinter van. And uh, otherwise we have Mercedes, you know, their standard infotainment displays in the center here. Uh, you've got a bunch of different information that you can see. Lots of new features, tech from a tech standpoint in this. Uh, this also has Apple CarPlay and uh, we'll do a sound system test in this later and just kind of show you around this. One thing that Americans complained about with the last Sprinter was there weren't enough cup holders. So Mercedes has given us uh, just tons. There are tons of cup holders in here and there's even a little storage compartment here. You can put your phone, USB-C ports. It's grippy so it won't slide around. Out of sight, out of mind. We have automatic windshield wipers. There's nice armrests. These seats are very comfortable in typical Mercedes fashion. There's even cup holders down here for the rear seat passengers. I mean, there's just, there's space for days in this thing. Huge sun visors, even the space above here to store things. But let's show you what this thing looks like from the outside because I will say this is one of the most badass looking vehicles we've had in quite some time. This has a lift kit, four wheel drive. It's pretty kitted out. This would be the ultimate camping expedition overland sprinter van build. It's just huge. This is the 144 inch wheelbase. It has the six cylinder turbo diesel made into a seven speed transmission. And there's enough space back here you could pretty much just move in. Pretty cool. You can, you know, you can set up one of these however you like. You can put lounge chairs, speakers, lights, make it a little bit of a party van. You can put camping gear. You've got tie downs here that are pretty beefy. So big you can do jumping jacks and stand up and I still have about six inches of height above my head. Yeah, pretty awesome. And of course this has the, the dually set up in the rear. It's been getting a ton of attention this week. The object of uh, envy from I'm sure many a delivery van driver and camping enthusiast.
This is definitely the biggest and tallest vehicle I think I've ever driven, as a press car at least. Um, I have great visibility out of the sides. These nice little blind spot mirrors show me what's uh, right next to me. Amazing greenhouse here from the front. Yeah, this thing is actually pretty good to drive. Let's, let's take it out and uh, we'll see how it does. As you'd kind of expect with a vehicle like this, it's it drives like a van. It is a van, but uh, there's definitely a little bit more refinement here than uh, what there has been in the past. The ride quality is actually quite decent, especially considering how much uh, you know payload capacity this can carry. And uh, you know, you you think when you buy one of these, you're gonna fill it with a bunch of tools, gear stuff you know you're going to load this van down so the suspension's going to want to be able to uh, compensate for that so it is a, the ride is a little bit stiff with this not outfitted with anything except a few seats but um actually it's not too bad it's pretty livable and i'm sure once you do put everything in this that that ride quality will smooth right out no problem of turbo noises, a little bit of transmission whine. For how tall this thing is, it's actually pretty fun to drive. The steering's pretty good. Definitely an active chassis. Brake pedal is actually very responsive. A lot of braking power. You don't feel like it would be very difficult to bring this big thing down from a stop. The seven speed transmission is smooth. There's a little bit of turbo lag once you uh, mat the throttle, but Has a decent level of acceleration for something like this. Top speed's only 90 miles an hour, and once you get on the highway, you can definitely feel the aerodynamic drag from this keeping you uh, from going too fast. These seats are so great, they even hold you in a little bit around the corners. Being up to 70 miles an hour. Set cruise control here. You do have a radar guided system, so you can set your following distance. And there is lane keep assist, which I actually have been struggling to keep off this week. Uh, if you go into your settings, and uh, you pretty much, if you want to turn it off, you have to turn it off every time you drive the vehicle. And uh, it's a little bit of an intrusive system, so it's been kind of annoying to deal with, but it's a, you can go into this quick access menu, turn it off really quickly and easily, and uh, you're ready to go. But I wish Mercedes would save whatever setting you've uh, set it to. And of course, every time you save Mercedes, the, uh, what do you the, the want voice to do? assist comes on. That's another feature with this Sprinter is that much like Apple Siri, Amazon's Alexa, when you say, hey Mercedes. How may I help you? No results found. What would you like to do? What do you want to do? Hey Mercedes. How may I help you? Open the map. What can I do for you? But like most voice activation systems, it's pretty difficult to get what you want out of it. And I'm sure you have to know some of the commands 
that uh, are programmed in too. There's a little bit of delay off the line from the throttle until the turbo spools up. But otherwise, this thing is pretty great to drive in all honesty. It's been pretty windy this week and big gusts don't seem to affect this too much. It's very comfortable on the highway. These seats are fantastic. Nice driving position. Wind noise isn't too bad either. Could definitely drive this thing around the country, no problem. I've been averaging about 16 to 18 miles to the gallon, depending on how I drive. Honestly, not that fast, but I think for what it is, it's adequate power, and uh, it'll get you up to a reasonable speed. You don't want to be cruising at 80 in one of these things. The radar guided cruise control works great. It keeps a very nice following distance. You can adjust that pretty easily down here. I mean, this is all pretty typical Mercedes these days. And, uh, oops, I said it again. There are safe words and then there are unsafe words. And uh, saying Mercedes in this van is the unsafe word. Let's go into Apple CarPlay here. I would like to see Apple CarPlay use a more widescreen uh, view, like a lot of other cars I've integrated. Mercedes seems to struggle with that a little bit in their latest iterations of this infotainment but uh, ultimately this is all so easy to control especially with these steering wheel touch controls this is one of the best systems I've found to operate the complexities and the menus inside modern infotainment systems Radar guided cruise getting us back up to speed here very nicely. I do enjoy how turbo diesels drive. They're just a little bit. They're kind of engaging, they're fun. You hear noises that you don't hear in other modern cars. There's turbo boost. It sounds very industrial, but yeah, I've, I've actually really grown to like this thing over the last week. This would be so much fun to outfit as like a camping expedition vehicle and uh, with the 4x4 low range package in this, which is not cheap, it is an extra $7,800 and I'm not sure about the lift kit on this, there's got to be something, but uh, you'd have a pretty capable vehicle. We did a little bit of light off-roading yesterday on our pretty lame off-road track, it's basically just a mud puddle, but uh, it got through it with surprising, surprisingly little effort, and uh, it was pretty good to drive. It, this this thing could tackle some, some pretty gnarly terrain just with the ground clearance and the four-wheel drive alone. Let's, uh, let's wrap up this video with a sound test, and uh, we'll show you guys just a brief taste of what this audio system is like. It's, it's pretty pitiful, if I'm honest. But uh, yeah, let's give you guys a little taste. You definitely would want to upgrade the speakers. I think this is a five speaker system. And uh, yeah, there's just no bass to it at all.
treble's a little shrill. This is supposed to have a ton of bass. It's pretty non-existent. Anyway, you guys get the idea. <laughs> Does have a little reverse camera, proximity sensors. The turning radius in the mess is actually pretty impressive. Um, so that's nice. The uh, reverse camera is pretty high up. It's kind of on the top of the doors. But overall, once you get used to the proportions of this van, it's pretty easy to place and park and, and navigate around tight areas. Nice parking sensors there. Of course, your column mounted shifter here. Overall, this thing's pretty awesome. Uh, for what it is and what you can use it for and all the configurations that you can uh, adapt to with uh, this, uh, this whole lineup, pretty compelling purchase, reasonably priced. Um, definitely better than a lot of the other similar vans that I've driven on the market. Um, so yeah, pretty top marks for this. It's been fun to get into something a little bit different this week that uh, strays from our usual press car repertoire or testing. So a lot of neat stuff that I also didn't cover in this video, but there's a lot to talk about with this new Sprinter van, a lot of new features that Mercedes has brought out. and. Um, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. This is a this has been an interesting week with this thing. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. And as always, appreciate you guys' support. And thanks for watching. We will see you in the next video. business. Oh yeah, one thing I forgot to mention. This has the sliding step here. Yes. little bit of bonus b-roll here let's say you want to fill up your sprinter 3500 where's the uh where's the fuel tank where do you where do you fill it up well just so you know it's very very well hidden right here cool had to make a phone call for this one i was stumped all right now the video's over Thanks, you guys. We'll see ya.